Okay, so on to the next bit. So my plan, I talked about this blade holder. This is the very first part I made. And I decided at the time that I had to wait until I was all the way done to know what size to make this. So I mentioned that I wanted to be able to, can you see that? Let me zoom it in a little bit. So you can see this right here. The back half is the one that can do a circular pattern in a radial pattern. This one, I want to be able to slide it side to side. So you could set it incrementally, as many divisions as you chose, this way. So in doing that, you could like put a series of say four or five cuts this way. Then turn this guy 90 degrees and do the same cuts back the other way, and you would have like square pattern. Anyway, the trick for me, aside from the rest of it, is figuring out how to adjust this guy back and forth in such a way that it's easy to adjust, easy to take it out and change the blade, and it stays fairly precise while it moves. And so I'm starting with this. Zoom in a little more. There, can you see it? 3 16 piece of steel plate. I'm going to drill three holes. with this annular cutter that came from this kit. Infinity high speed steel annular cutting set. It's made in China, it was very economical and I picked it up because I use these a lot. And quite frankly over the course of the last year, maybe a little more than a year, I have used these a bunch and they stand up quite well. So but I'm usually using it on mild steel. So that's the next step. I gotta set this guy up and drill three holes with this cutter to make a slot. As long as I don't drop it on the floor and break it. Alexa, volume zero. Lord forbid I play Jimi Hendrix while I'm working. And let someone else hear it. So I'm ready to go. We'll let this guy up. Now these annular cutters, I tend to try and start them by hand to keep the chatter down until I get a socket for the teeth. So you gotta just ease into them and use a lot of juice, a lot of lubricant. So, and they like going slow. So I'm gonna go to see what it's like at one. Guess I was threading last time. That's pretty good. It's just rapid tap. 
and the spring loaded pin in the middle kind of keeps it lined up while I slip in real quiet like. more sauce. Missing stairway to heaven right now. Kind of bummer. All right. Like I said before, I'll put it as as low as I can get it and still perform the function, so it stays rigid. Okay, hi guys, so this stick splitter and I'm doing a moving jaw and I'm going to make it out of 3 16 plate and I'm going to weld it. And so a couple of quick tips on welding prep, when you're ready to weld it, actually weld it, it has to be really, really clean if you want it to be really good. So. And there's another consideration is that what I'm making is a little box and that little box has to have this guy slide into it. So I can't weld inside, I, gotta, I have to have very sharp corners in the ins inside for that to move back and forth so I have to weld it all on the outside. And that means I have to chamfer the edges to a 45 so I can put the two corners together. Essentially, let me demonstrate, you know, the, they're going to join like this. And so, where they sit, I need to have a groove there to fill in the weld, you know, to put a, to make a really strong weld. So it starts with making a chamfer. Let me get down here where you can see it better. So I've kind of marked here with a sharpie the, the place I need to put the chamfer. I don't know how many times I've gotten these flipped around and done it wrong. So you got to make a method so you know which one you're doing every time or else you're going to end up making another part. Okay, so this is the one I just did. It's got a, it's going to sit just like this, I'm sorry, like this. Like this, get it right Kim, this guy goes right here. And so I've got half of a V groove right now. Don't be tempted to just weld it that way. You really need it on both sides. This is just a little handheld to show the mock-up on this guy. So, if you look real close, let's see. There's the V notch that's got to be welded up on both sides. 
So what it's going to start with is I will tack this guy to the front plate and make sure it's all perfectly square and straight and you know tack up back and then I'm going to be working on eliminating a lot of material because fabrication is in many ways a lot like algebra and you're thinking to yourself what the heck does that mean well if you know about algebra you start out with a complex problem and to make it simpler so that you can solve it easier you go through a process called reducing the equation so you know you find things that cancel each other out and eliminate them as a factor it's the same way with fabrication you figure out how to make it you figure out how to make it do what you want to do you figure out how to build it and then you try and eliminate every little bit of metal and piece that doesn't need to be there because wasted material that's still on the device just makes it heavier bulkier uglier so you try and reduce it down to the simplest solution to each engineering problem and then reduce it down to the simplest thing to build with your available tools and materials and then you try and eliminate anything that doesn't need to be part of the device. All right, well, here goes some. I get into some tacky stuff sometimes, so I'm being tacky today. Okay, so here's the second side. I gotta point out that, pull this guy down. Fabricating these little parts like these, these tiny things, this is actually big considering some of the stuff I make. It's really important to have good, a bunch of clamps, obviously, but find some brass or aluminum or lacking that, um, sheets of copper you can get like copper fittings and cut them you know like a coupler for pipe cut them lengthwise through a tube and flatten them out but you can back up this weld with copper or brass it will stay almost perfectly square the entire way and so if you have an inside dimension that you're welding together and you need that inside dimension to stay pretty close to the same size back it up with some I mean you can use aluminum but it is not really good right against the weld copper or brass is fantastic okay here's another part I've got it all clamped together because one frame has become stable enough to clamp stuff in it. And so this bottom part and this angled part right here, I'm going to tack this together and I'm going to tack it to this plate here and here. So then these three parts will be one half and these three parts will be the other half. So that's what this operation is about. It's so that I can get in there and do certain things inside before I weld the whole assembly into one piece. Continued to fit things together and it got this guy kind of tacked but right here where this drumstick goes through I needed to put a gusset that went from the base to the center of load which is the center of the drumstick 
and so I got a gap there and so I basically eyeballed the angle cut a piece off with a cutoff saw you know one of these guys so let's get this zoomed in a little so see if I can do this without getting my fat hands in the way There it is. So I'll go in here and weld this all in real good and then uh, contour it tapered out. Yeah, very nice, very nice indeed. Just a way of making it look nice and sanitary. It's gonna look like one piece of steel when I'm done. I got it so tight, it just hangs there. I'm digging it. going I have to take breaks because it gets so hot. Notice it's already straw on the back and it's blue in a lot of other areas. That's pretty hot. So I waited for like 15-20 minutes for it to cool down a bit. It's not cold but at least I can hang on to the torch now. So that's what I'm doing now. guys here it's 3 8 24 I'm gonna silver solder them into that hole right there on each side it's part of the adjustment mechanism so you see some silver solder right there safety silk 56 and some black space silk flux I'm not gonna do it I've done it a bunch of times but that's the plan yeah Getting close. Well, alrighty then. This is the last component that I have to weld together. 
and I've cut all these pieces out and I've used a fly cutter to clean all of the they were hot rolled clean off the mill scale and I've marked where I got a champ from and then I'll set it up to tack them yeah it's the last piece I got weld I gotta weld it all together and then weld it onto here mm-hmm real close it's possible that by the end of the day I'll be testing it on the drumstick nice so yeah the cutter goes in here you can adjust it back and forth this way and this is zero backlash I got to put a bolt right here to hold this guy in when you go to pull out you always don't want to leave anything when you pull out like the jaw so that's it fan friggin tastic it's time to start drinking okay so it's a milestone here's all the parts that I fabricated not including the little screws but this one this one these screws I made, these thumb screws I made. This is the cover that goes on the little cutter holder. And it's got a hinge on the back. That's the, the blade holder. This is the housing for the bearing that allows this guy to spin, the indexer. This is the main body of the vice section and the jack screw and the moving jaw and of course there's bearings and stuff in here the bearings in here are out of an old automotive air conditioning compressor cool shit yep so all the major fabrication is done there may be a tad more a little bit of welding this or that or soldering this or that but now it's about taking this, these ones out of the mix All well, these parts here that remain are the parts that are going to get painted. Oh, yeah, and this one. Now, this, these three I have already sandblasted. These two I got to sandblast, but I want to mask up this piece of brass and this piece of stainless steel, which I have polished quite shiny. And then I'll prime them and sand them and prep them and paint them. And then from then on, the only thing I have left is a few more thumb screws to make and a bunch of polishing. I have to make an oil hole down here so that you can introduce oil into the jack screw. Little stuff. And then it'll be done. Yahoo! literally about 300 hours right now yeah way cool all right so i'm working on the the bottom mounts to hold it up it has to elevate it to have room for this this is just uh some regular you know three quarter ID tube it's a little it ain't exactly three but and then I took some bar stock and turned it to where I could it was the exact same diameter of the inside of this pipe except not including the weld because there's a weld in there by doing that it was almost a slip fit without the weld so I was able to put it in a vise that just press these guys down in there with a vise and I'm going to weld them around the edges and this piece of stainless steel bar stock inch by one eighth and right now I have it bolted on here and I'm going to go in and tack the corners and then once I get it tacked I take it off and I weld it all and finish it and put it back on and there'll be some contouring because like these guys are going to be under here 
like so, welded on. And so I want to make this, these corners all the same shapes. Yep, that's the plan. Stand by. I am very happy because I got where I can paint all of the sandable primered areas, which means I've found everything I can. And now I gotta go around, I'm gonna paint it with red oxide. Okay, so I painted these guys. It's Rust-Oleum metal, kind of like a cobalt blue. And I'm showing, I put this pin in here, it holds this little door. And then you see it's all crapped up. Let me zoom in. See if you can see this. A couple of punch marks, they look, it looks like a face. Those two punch marks expanded the edge a little bit so that pin can't come out. Yeah, it's in there permanently now. So I'll sand it a bit. A little bit of uh, spot putty to make it disappear and then I'll shoot it again with a second coat. So I did the first coat, attached the door, and now I'll do the second coat. Okay, now I'll see if I can't put these drive screws in without screwing things up. It's in the hole. I got a piece of uh, old t-shirt rolled up under there to support it while I whack it. Let's see if this works. Oh, need a better angle. Another one. All right, flushed out. Perfect. Let's see. Turn it around. Where is it? There it is. Huh. Move just a hair. Sitting right in a hole. Let's see. I don't know if I have. I'm gonna make sure I got something underneath it to hold on to it. That was a pretty good spot got the brass block in there and I'm supporting it with this rag and I got this little punch that's got a hole in it for driving in roll pins set in really good one more good one and there it is
Hi guys, Kim here. Well, I got this guy done, tested. If you watch the video up till here, you notice that it cuts like this. And it will go off to one side or the other side, it doesn't matter. So it doesn't favor the right side or the left side. But what it does favor is when you, the very first cut, it will move over to one side or the other and then the blade will bend. And what it is, is the grain of the wood. So let me step back a little bit. When I first got the story of this, it was about a couple of guys when they were a lot younger that were trying to do this with a knife on a drumstick. They had limited success was what they told me. It's just so hard to hold it and get it straight. And the guy now who's much older asked me, he says, you're good at making weird things. Maybe you can make a thing to duplicate that with some precision. Truth be told, from the beginning, my assumption was that it wouldn't work well because I've split a lot of wood in my days in various fashions, and it never splits straight down the middle. You know, it just doesn't do that. It follows the grain. And the thing is, as soon as the blade, no matter how sharp it is, penetrates, it, spread, it spreads the gap open because of the thickness of the blade. And that tends to make the wood split ahead of the blade, and it'll follow the grain. But the point of it is, assuming that, or thinking, yeah, that's going to happen, is not proof that it's going to happen. So I made this very substantial little guy to do that. But I also did it so that... Let me move out of the way a little bit. I gotta crank this guy out. So, this part I made to hold the drumstick and to index it so that you can keep it straight. But the reason I made this part come out real easy is in case I had to try a different method. I've pretty much proven that a blade won't do it. But what about a saw blade? This little thing is a Harbor Freight bench grinder, a tiny one. I mean, it's it's got a 10 millimeter shaft with an adapter to make it half inch. So I'm gonna mount it right here with a saw blade on it. A very thin saw blade. If I can't cut it with a razor blade, can I cut it with a really thin saw blade? So yeah, stay tuned, it gets weirder. Thanks for watching.